Hi, my name is Matt Carlos, and we're in DaVinci Resolve. And guys, we are at 700 subscribers. That is crazy. I didn't even think this channel would grow that quickly. Thank you again. And if you guys are new or you've learned a lot and you haven't subscribed, then please do. Get getting some feedback on the channel is really helping me. And um, I do look at my analytics and look at what people request. So in order to figure out how to move forward in the future, um, pff, anybody that wants to like, comment, or subscribe, I'd appreciate it so much. But anyways, that's enough of... Um, me shilling my channel. So today's episode is going to be a no nonsense tutorial on saturation. Now I'm going to have four methods for you. And I did have a viewer ask me a very special question that I will get to. I could sit here and explain all of this, but I'm going to sit here and show you and then explain each of these consecutively. So if you want to follow along with me, download some stock footage and uh, make four iterations of it and make sure you're in a color manage timeline uh, that is aware of all the footage you are working in. This is all rec 709. Let's get started. First, method is going to be the traditional way of saturating your image. You would go to your primaries wheels, go down to the bottom, and you'd crank up the saturation. Now for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to pull the saturation all the way up to the maximum value because of YouTube compression, and I want everyone to be able to see clearly what's going on. The second method is going to be, you have to go to your HDR wheels, and in order for this saturation method to work, you're going to have to have DaVinci know what color space you're working in. So make sure you use a colors transform or work in a timeline that's similar to your footage. We're going to pull this saturation knob on the global wheel all the way up. I'm going to crank this sucker all the way up. Third method. I'm going to right click on the node. I'm going to go to channels and I'm going to turn channels one and three off. So one thing I wanted to include in make very clear is that channels one, two, and three are going to represent hue, saturation, and value or hue, saturation, and luminance respectively. By turning off channels one and three, we are isolating the saturation channel and we are operating on that channel independently. Then I'm going to go to color space. I'm going to go to HSL. Okay. For the fourth one, I'm going to go do the same thing to turn channels one and three off. However, I'm going to go to HSV. Now with the HSL and the HSV saturation, you can go to your primaries wheels. I'm going to crank this up to 1.5. So you guys can really see what's going on on both of these. Okay, now let's explain all of these. First example, the traditional saturation. I do not like the way that the old way of applying saturation is because it makes everything go nuclear. The colors look really fake and it makes the brightness of the colors go haywire. You risk clipping. This footage is very nice footage, so obviously it's not clipping, but it'll clip super fast if you don't know what you're doing. Then we have the HDR wheels. The HDR wheels, to put it short, is DaVinci's wheels for trying to be mindful of the color space you're working in and applying saturation and contrast that way. So it's trying to preserve the footage and not go outside of bounds and break anything. Occasionally, sometimes stuff will break, but the way it applies saturation, as you can see, is a little more natural. So this is the way I would apply saturation before I was aware of the two last methods. Now we have HSL. HSL adds a pop saturation. So it's going to add saturation, I'd argue, very well. And it's going to be like the traditional way of saturating. However, it's going to make colors very bright. So it's going to add a healthy amount of saturation, but there's going to be a lot of brightness. And we're going to compare this to HSV just to make this very clear. Look at this. If I turn this on and off, the colors aren't getting any brighter, but they're, they're, gaining density they're they're getting more saturated they're becoming more like they're becoming obvious but without becoming bright the brightness levels aren't changing much it's preserving it for the most part whereas with this one you can see on the scopes that it's bouncing around a lot as opposed to this one right here this one isn't moving around too much and you could choose whichever weight that suits you the most however i prefer hsl most of the time because i do not like my saturation moving the brightness levels of my footage i like working in a vacuum when it comes to things you guys saw this in my creative contrast video where i said i do not like moving the saturation when i'm working on my contrast same thing goes here next node over let's just say i'm applying my saturation now i don't like messing with the contrast when i'm working with my saturation now for this last example i want to show you guys something really cool i set up an hsl saturation right here adjustment what if i told you that you can add your own custom curve this curve right here is 
actually going to be used to control saturation. And this isn't known to everybody, but the primary's wheels with lift gamma and gain are applying linear adjustments on a curve. So when you adjust gain, you're making the saturation actually have a highlight bias. And when you're making a gamma adjustment on HSL or HSV, you're making a midtone bias with some bleeding over into the shadows. So if you want to go for a custom look and you're wondering how all those guys are getting really cool, like cinematic or filmic looks. Look what happens when I drag down on this curve. Interesting, huh? Look what happens when I drag up on it. I can also make my own custom curve. I can make an S curve of saturation. Look, I can rip saturation out of the darkest points and add it to the highest points like this. That's amazing, right? Pretty cool. I can even add it to my darkest points or take it out of my darkest points. Careful with the skin tones though. Sometimes you want to click on the skin and see where it's at on your image before you do anything like this. This is very advanced, but I've seen a lot of people do very well with this, even with a little experience. Now we're going to go into the interesting part. So I'm going to make another HSL saturation adjustment right here and disable channels one and three. And actually, <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to turn off channels one and three. We're going to leave those on. Look what happens when I drag down on the gamma. Interesting, isn't it? We're getting a really moody look now. And if we stack that with my secret sauce that I showed in one of my last videos where I take another node, add a lot of blur, and then change this composite mode to screen right here. Go to the keyer and turn this off and crank it back up. Now we're getting this dreamy look. That's crazy. Look at that. I made this in two adjustments and it's mathematically accurate. Nothing's breaking. Looks pretty good. It's still true to life, right? We're not influencing a lot here. We're not changing the colors, but we're influencing how they are perceived because density does make people feel different when they see things. The grass in this photo is not no longer green. It's just the, very, the most dense color of green. The roses are still red, but they are taking on a very sanguine red. So all of these adjustments that I showed you today can be done in reverse to remove saturation in the same way, or they can be done additively to add saturation. And to answer that one viewer's question about whether HSL or HSV is superior, I would say HSL is great when you want to stay true to life. And HSV is when you want to add that super awesome pop to something like a commercial or a lifestyle ad or maybe lifestyle content for a content creator. I hope I explained everything very well. I will see you guys later. Go to the comments, tell me if I missed anything, add value by mentioning stuff I possibly didn't mention. I will give you the pin of respect if you manage to do that. And you guys have a wonderful day. You guys are awesome. Cheers.